Hello, welcome back to Cindy's Library. And today I want to talk about A City of Bells by Elizabeth Googe. Ah, I'm so glad that I have discovered Elizabeth Googe now because she is such a wonderful writer. In fact, stay tuned for more news as far as that goes. But to go on to the City of Bells, this is the story of a town or little city named Torminster. It's a cathedral town and it is right after the Boer Wars. Jocelyn is a young man from a fairly uh, influential family, uh, London area, I believe, who after college was joined up for the Boer War and got sent back with a game leg and a fair amount of disillusionment and some mental healing that needed to be done. And he found he couldn't do it in the loving arms of his family, who primarily wanted him to get a prominent position with a high-ranking politician or some such equally socially useful thing like that. Not at all what he really wanted or needed at that time. So he goes off to Torminster to stay with his grandparents who are there for a while. His grandfather is one of the canons there. And things start happening. He meets his young cousin. Um, oh, what is his name? Hugh Anthony, that's right, who his grandparents adopted after his uncle died, and I guess his wife died too. And they also adopted a girl named Henrietta, and they affect his life for better, as do his grandparents. And he meets a young lady named Felicity there who is staying with an old aunt for a vacation. She's an actress in London herself. And so things are starting to look up for him when the whole of Torminster decides that he should take a place that no one else wants. He should rent it or buy it and turn it into a bookstore. And it is a place that uh, Jocelyn himself has already uh, noticed and been attracted to. But it is a haunted place. There was a man, Gabriel Berranti, who lived there. He was a writer, an unsuccessful writer, although grandfather and Henrietta made friends with him. And I think it's about a year before the start of this story, he just up and left one day, leaving everything behind pretty much. And no one has taken this place since. So strangely impelled, Gabriel, or not Gabriel, um, Jocelyn does take this place. He does turn it into a bookstore. And uh, partly inspired by his grandfather and by Henrietta, he starts trying to unravel the mystery of uh, Berante. Uh, why did he leave so suddenly? What was his past? Because not even grandfather got much of that out of him, aside from the fact that he has some Italian parentage and seems to have spent some time at least in Italy. But as Jocelyn looks to uh, 
understand this mystery? Well, the more he becomes attached to Ferranti and the more he, the more it becomes important for him to uh, figure out what happened to Ferranti to put him to rest one way or another, so to speak. So, wonderful characters. Hugh Anthony and Henrietta are especially wonderful as children. Uh, there are some characters who perhaps aren't quite so attractive, but even so, you end up feeling, again, sympathy for them and understanding them. And I think, well, I've only read two of Elizabeth Scalge's books so far. No, three. I've read, I saw Three Ships as well, but that's a little bit different, being more of a children's story. But she does seem quite able to get into the minds of any one of her characters and make them sympathetic and make them understandable to us. You might not always agree with what they do, but they're entirely sympathetic, which is wonderful. Torminster is just filled with wonderful characters and personalities, pretty much all of whom at the end are wanting just to be good people, which is a wonderful thing to see. And we also see people trying to do good. I would say in particular, Jocelyn with some help from Felicity because he expends a lot of effort and energy trying to find uh, their auntie and trying to get into his mindset, which he does succeed at doing eventually, but the details I will leave you to discover. So another wonderful book by Elizabeth Gouge. Not sure I can say I liked it quite as much as The Dean's Watch. Not sure whether that's because The Dean's Watch is my first Elizabeth Gouge book or not, but I'm excited to read more from her and I'm glad she has a nice list for me to go through something to look forward to. But yes, I highly recommend A City of Bells by Elizabeth Gout. And if you haven't given her a try yet, she is now one of my favorite authors and I can't believe I've never read her before. So I think that's all I have on The City of Bells for today. I hope you are all staying safe and healthy enjoying reading. I would love to hear any comments or suggestions below. And as always, I hope everyone stays safe and healthy and happy reading.